In the last video we added a notification widget that appears when we pick up an item. In today's episode I will show you how you can implement different types of items. However, before we get started there is a bug that someone pointed out in the comments. So when we pick up our quest item and right click we can see that there is no option to throw it away. However, if we just grab it and drop it somewhere in the canvas it will be removed. So let's fix that first. All right, let's go to our widgets folder and on our main widget, go to the graph and under drag and drop, double click on our on drop function. Now when our cast to the widget drag fails and we cast to the item drag, before we go into our branch here, let's get the item info, expand that and off of the category search for not equal, not equal enum. Then for the enum value here, select quest items. Move that over a bit. And off of that, we will go into a branch. So when our cast is successful, we will go in that branch first. If it isn't a quest item, we will go into the next branch. If it is a quest item, we will search for a return value and we return true. Now let's compile save and let's see whether that worked. Now let's get a ring, drop that somewhere and we couldn't throw it away. All right, now let's get started with our different items. So first off, I want to implement the health potion, which is a consumable item. So that means after it is used, it will be removed from our inventory. To actually show our player that the health potion does something, we will create a health bar first. So let's go to the designer in our main widget. And by the way, while we are here, uh, get the canvas panel of the main widget, call it something like canvas and make it a variable. We will need that later. Now for our health bar, let's grab a border, drag that on top of our canvas, set the padding to zero, set the brush color to complete black with an alpha of 0.5 maybe and hit OK. I will use a size in X of 400 pixel and in Y of 95 pixel. Feel free to change that. Then on top of our border we will add a vertical box and in that vertical box we will first add a text. Put that on here. Set the text to align center and for the text we will type in health points then let's also change the color and opacity to something like a middle gray tone and then we will add a progress bar which will be the actual health bar uh, drag that on top of our vertical box call that health bar sure it's a variable then we will set that to fill and give it a padding of maybe five pixel looks fine now you can also define a fill color so when you drag that percent value up you will see the color here I will just lower the alpha a bit something like 0.6 will work yeah set the percent to zero and that's it for our health bar in the main widget. Now let's compile and save. And we have to go to the top down character. Now let's create some variables here. The first one will be our current HP. And that will be an integer. Next one will be our max HP. Compile and save. And we will give the current HP a default value of 50 and max HP something like 100. Then let's add a function that is called update health bar. We will just get the inventory reference off of it, get the main widget. Off of the main widget, we will get our, H our health bar. And then from that health bar, we will set the percent. 
and for the in percent get the current HP get the max HP convert the current HP to a float copy that do that for the max HP as well and then divide the current HP by the max HP plug that in for the in percent connect the execution wise and add a return node Let's add another function called increase health that will be called by our health potion. Add an input which will be the amount of health points that we want to increase. Then we will get the current HP and also set the current HP. For the value we want to set it for, get the current HP, search for plus, integer plus integer, connect that to the amount. And after that we want to clamp it from 0 to our max HP so we will make sure that it will never be below 0 and never above our max HP then plug in the return value for the set current HP and after that we also want to update our health bar then we can return now compile and save that's it already for our top-down character and now let's get to our item classes under blueprints item classes and let's quickly open up our beefy master item so remember that we added our event on use and here it is defined what our item does when it is used all of our items are children classes of the bp master item and currently they all execute the functionality of our bp master item so all of them will print the string you use the item and remove afterwards and then the actor will be destroyed. If we want to implement different functionality for one of our children classes however, we will just open up our item health potion, open it in full blueprint editor and right click search for event on used. So now we can execute different functionality for the health potion. First off let's get the inventory. Off of that, get the top down character and let's get our max HP and the current HP. So first off we will check whether our current HP is less than our max HP. If it's not, so if it's equal to our max HP, we won't do anything with the health potion. So just destroy the actor. Also note that destroying the actor doesn't mean that we will remove it from the inventory. That is done by our remove item at index function. So when it's true we will get the top down char reference and search for increase health. Now you could type in something for the amount. I will just use 10 to start with. And after we increased our health let's copy over the inventory and search for remove item at index. For the index we will search for our index. So the index that is defined on spawn connected to the index and amount will be 1. After we did that we can destroy our health potion actor. Now before we can play test we also have to go back to our inventory actor and on the event graph before we add our main widget to the viewport, let's make sure that we get in the top down char reference and search for update health bar. Now we should be ready to test, compile, save, and we will play. Let's get our 50 health potion. You can see our health bar there that is filled by 50%. Now we can right click on our health potion and drink one. See that it increased and we have 49 left. Also remember that we implemented double clicking to quickly use items so we can do that. And now we have 45 left. Our health bar is full and now we can't use our health potion anymore. Alright, that's it for the way you want to set up consumable items. Now I will also show you how you can implement items that can be used multiple times, like the map. Also, I downloaded that treasure map texture you can see here from Google 
if you want to have it just search for treasure map okay first let's go to our widgets folder and we will create a new widget for our old map so on the user interface widget blueprint call that old map in here make sure to kill the canvas panel we will start with a size box for the width and height override I will choose 650 by 480 pixel also change the setting to desired on screen so we can see that here now on our size box we will add a border clear the padding for the border and give it a brush color of a dark grayish color with an alpha of 0.7 maybe then on top of our border we will add a vertical box and in that vertical box we will start with a horizontal box then search for text add that to the horizontal box and the text will just say old map align that to the left and to the center then we will also get a button add that on top of a horizontal box that will be our close button make sure that it's set to align right and to fill so that it appears at the right corner of a widget then let's get a text add that on top of our close button and just type in X make sure that the padding to the left and to the right is bigger than the padding from top and bottom so something like 10 for left and right should work so it looks like a square then let's get the close button and for the background color choose something like a red color and we also want to get an image that will be the old map texture add that to the vertical box set that to fill and for the brush under image I will choose the treasure map alright looks fine compile and save um, let's hop over to the graph and create a variable we will need a reference to the to the item actor of the map so call that old map actor and for the variable type search for item and then choose the item map reference make that editable and expose on spawn compile and save keep the widget open and let's go to our item classes and to the item map open that in full blueprint now right click again and search for on used event 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 unused so right click search for inventory get the main widget and of the main widget also get the inventory widget first off drag off of the inventory widget and search for set is enabled make sure that it's set to false so we will disable our inventory widget first just so that we can't move around other slots or use other items while we are looking at our map then we want to create a widget and the widget will obviously be our old map the old map actor will be our cells then let's promote that to a variable call that map widget then let's copy over the inventory in the main widget here and out of the main widget let's get the canvas that was the reason why we had to make it a variable because we will dynamically add our old map widget to the canvas now and to do that drag off of the canvas and search for add child choose the add child to canvas content will be our map widget and then off of the return value we want to change some variables so first off we want to set anchors and then we can split the struct pin here and for the anchors we will set everything to 0.5 so it will be anchored to the middle of our screen then search for set auto size and check that 
So that way it will appear in the size we defined in our size box in the old map widget. After that, also we want to set the position in the viewport and we will set the position to minus 325 and minus 240. Remember that that is the half of our width and height override, so it will appear perfectly in the center. After we did that, we can also get the player controller. And of that, search for set input mode, UI only. So that way we can't run around with our player anymore when we're looking at our map widget. For the in widget to focus, we will connect our map widget. Okay, that will happen when our map is used. We will also add another event, so add custom event, and that will be on red. And we are finished with reading our map. First thing we want to do, copy our inventory main widget and the inventory widget and set is enabled. Set is enabled to true again. After that, get the map widget and remove it from parent. Then we can get our player controller again. And this time we will set the input mode back to game and UI. Just leave the in widget to focus blank. After that, we can destroy our actor. And that way we can use our map multiple times because we only spawn and destroy our actor, but we won't remove it from the inventory. Now we also need a way to call our on red function. And that will happen when in our old map widget, we click the close button. So add an on click, get the old map actor and search for on red. Call that function. We should be ready to test. Get our health potion and let's get our two maps. Let's right click on our map and select read. Now we can see our old map widget and our inventory is disabled. I can click and our character won't move around anymore. Now we can take a closer look at the old map and when we close it, we see that our inventory is enabled again, can move around again and we can read it multiple times. It won't be removed. All right, that's it for implementing different types of items. In the next video, we will finally do a hard keep up. See you then.